In this video, I'm just going to talk about how I make my Discord emojis, and we're going to be making these three adorable emojis as a demonstration. My software of choice is always Photoshop when I make my emojis or do any kind of digital painting. That's my software. My hardware is just a Wacom Intuos Draw tablet. It's really small, and you can get them really cheap now. And they do take a bit of getting used to because they're smaller, but it gets the job done. Maybe someday I'll actually get an upgrade, but this is what I'm currently using. Now that I have that out of the way, because I know people always ask those questions, I can get straight into how I make my Discord emojis. For me, I keep all of my emojis in the same file. I don't know if it's the best thing you can do, but I personally like to do it because then I can just easily switch back and forth between all the different layers and compare to my previous emojis this way. It's just a lot faster for me. So my first thing is just to make sure I'm getting the proper brush size so I can start my initial sketch. Since I have done some emojis previously, I just want to make sure that my new emojis that I'm making will match them. So I just make sure my brush thickness is around the same width. Then I just create a layer and start sketching. Now sometimes I might end up drawing something more than once depending on how quickly I can come up with it. Sometimes they start off as really sloppy sketches and then I clean them up. Sometimes I even have to redraw them several times before I'm happy with them. So it can be a little time consuming. Sometimes if it helps, I will sketch them on paper beforehand, although with these ones I just sketched them inside of Photoshop for the first time. So it just depends on what is easier. If you did sketch it on paper beforehand, you could bring it into Photoshop and then trace it. But that's basically what I'm doing here, just all inside of Photoshop. So I'm going to do an initial sketch and then I'm going to fade it a little bit and then make another sketch on top of that that's a more finalized version. Now I don't really care about how clean the lines are or if they're too sloppy because I made sure to make my document size plenty big for an emoji. It's going to be scaled down quite small for what it's going to be used for. So any rough edges or lines aren't super important. I do try to smooth off as many as I can but it doesn't have to be perfect because for the scale you're going to be seeing it, it doesn't make much difference. Speaking of scale, that's something else that's really important to think about. Most of my other emojis are much more zoomed in than this one I'm making because this one has to have both arms showing and they both have to be raising up, so it's kind of hard to get that expression on a completely zoomed in, but as you can see, most of my other emojis are quite zoomed in. It took me a while to get over the fact that I had to crop my pictures to get them to fit and to look good as an emoji. Now for this one I'm making though, I don't really want to crop the arms off because they're such a small detail and cropping them off would really just lose the effect of the entire emote altogether. However, things that are larger and don't necessarily add anything to the expression, like the side of a face or the top of the head, it's okay to crop those things. Like I said, sometimes it takes me several tries to get it to look right. In the end, all I really care about is that my pose is accurately portrayed, that things are fairly consistently proportioned, and that my outline or my stroke width is consistent as well. That needs to be the same width or roughly the same width, and it needs to be consistent with my other emojis too. And this is just the style that I chose for my emoji, the really thick outline and then very basic coloring, shading. There's many styles, but I personally like the more simplified style because when you scale it down, so many details are going to be lost, so there's really no sense in over-detailing it with gradients and other small details. Especially for things like reactions in Discord, now that's probably the smallest use of an emoji, and most of the time even my emojis are unrecognizable at a reaction size, but it is something to consider as you're making them, that you're making your drawing plenty clear so that once it is scaled down, you'll still be able to recognize it. Once you are finally done with your outline, we're ready to color it in. I always start my base coloring on a separate layer, so I have my outline layer, then a color layer. Sometimes I'll use multiple layers, sometimes I'll just keep it on the same layer. It just depends on how brave I'm feeling, but I always do have the color separated from the outline. And for this file, I already have a separate color palette that I use on all of my emojis so they're consistent, but you would want to probably have something like that set up so that you could keep adding to your emoji collection. 
As you can see, I have quite a few emojis I've already made, so I just have my layer at the top and enable it as needed and just grab my colors from there. Once I have all the base colors down, then I just go on that same layer, or sometimes I create a new layer and I just go over the whole thing and add shadows and highlights. Now these details sometimes are a bit too small where they're barely noticeable in Discord, but I always add them because even if they are barely noticeable, it does make a little bit of a difference. But I would recommend if you do add shadows, highlights, just keep it very minimum, keep it very basic. You don't need to overdo it. I think the most detailed part I usually have is the hair. I have four different colors I use for the hair and everything else has two or three. But I wouldn't go any more than that if you're doing the style. It doesn't need to be over complicated with the shading. Just pick some basic colors and go with those. So this emoji is probably one of my more detailed ones out of all the ones I have, but this expression with both arms raised is just super hard to not be super detailed because I have to show all of the arms, otherwise it just gets lost and we don't want to chop off the arms. That would just look bad in this case because that is the main expression is she's raising her arms and she's cheering or whatever she's doing. I'm going to go ahead and make a couple more emojis for you and maybe give you a few other pointers. So this next one I'm going to make is much simpler and it's just going to be a little Meg lurking at the bottom of the screen. So this one was actually really simple to draw because I just have to draw the top half of the head. I guess the most challenging thing was making sure the hands looked quite right. I think the hands are almost to a point where they're a little too small to be noticed in Discord, but it's still not bad. It looks good on certain sizes. It's also good to take into account that if you're using your emoji for Discord, that different people use Discord differently and there's different ways you can view it. So there is the one mode where the emojis actually appear bigger, but then if you're using the compact mode, they're obviously going to appear much smaller. So it's always a good idea to test out all the different modes and stuff. But I'll get more into that later. Right now I'm just drawing this other emoji, just using the same steps I did before. And there's many ways you could approach the expression of your emoji. Something I could mention here, I guess, is that for emojis like this one especially, all of the expression is coming from the eyes. The eyes are the most expressive thing you can do with an emoji, and just one slight change, one slight adjustment can change the expression entirely. It's so much fun to mess around with expressions and seeing what you can come up with. So in this one, I want her to have this very sneaky, suspicious expression, which is why she's a little bit squinty as she's peering over the edge. So there's many different interpretations to this. I could have her wide-eyed and be kind of surprised peering over the edge, or I can make her a little squinty like this, being a little more like she's spying on you. So that was the idea for this emoji, and I think it turned out okay. And sometimes it does happen where I completely finish coloring one in, then I test it or reevaluate it and realize one line needs to move, and then I go back and fix the whole thing. But that's the benefit of having very simple shading for these, is it doesn't take me very much to fix it. It's really quick and easy to fix things. I just need to redraw the line and repaint the shadow in the right spot. I did end up adding a mouth to this later. It does look fine as it is, but it's just really simple, and the mouth just really helped sell the expression, especially when viewing it in Discord. Although, either way works. One more emoji I'm going to make is a surprised emoji. Kind of looks like the scream emoji, except I don't like calling it scream, although I think I did call it that in my layers, but I ended up calling it more of like a surprised emoji. This time I'm going to start my sketch with a low opacity brush because sometimes it's easier to do that than I feel like I'm in more of a sketch mood, like I'm not in the final version yet. So this is the super sloppy part where I try to figure out how I want my shape to go. Now this emoji I did struggle with quite a bit and I ended up redrawing it completely after I had finished it. But the process is still basically the same. Sometimes I just do things slightly differently. For example, this one I'm starting with a low opacity brush to get the initial shape, then having a second layer to draw over that. Now something I do want to mention that I don't do this with all my emojis, but if I ever have an emoji that's going to be cropped, 
Sometimes I'll start drawing it where it's not cropped and then I will resize it later and see how I want to be cropped. But a non-destructive way of working this way is I usually create a smart object. So once I have my outline completely drawn out, I will take those layers and convert them to a smart object, which is basically a Photoshop file within a Photoshop file. And that's the easiest way for me to describe it. It's a really non-destructive way of working. So inside my smart object is where I'm going to finish actually painting this and creating it. Then I can go to my main Photoshop file and then finish cropping it but that means I'll still have all those edges. Should I ever want to take this emoji and use it for something else where I didn't want to use the cropped version? So I do try to be as non-destructive as I can be with the emojis that I think I might want to use for other purposes. That's also another reason why I am drawing these at such a large scale is because you never know what other uses you're going to use them for. So it's always a good idea to have them at a much larger scale than what you actually need for Discord. Plus, you just want it bigger so that it actually looks really nice and clean when it's scaled down and not too pixelated. So I'm going through all the same steps of coloring it on all the different layers. Like I said, I always change up the way I do this. Sometimes I have a few layers, sometimes I have just two. It just really depends on the emoji and what I feel like doing. And once I have the full emoji drawn, I can go back to the original document and just crop it as needed. And we still have the whole thing there, so we can always shift and adjust it as we want. And we can always click back into the smart object to edit it as much as we need to. Now you're going to have to check where you're using your emoji. And if you're using it in Discord, the maximum file size is 256 kilobytes. And this emoji here is going to be way too big for that. Because like I said, I'm drawing it at a much bigger scale than it needs to be. So whenever I export it, I just want to make sure that the kilobytes is below the maximum, otherwise it's not going to let you upload it. So I have it at 1000 by 1000 pixels, but if I want to scale it down, I just lower the percentage until the size of the file gets where it needs to be. And this way you still have a nice high quality file, but it won't make much of a difference scaling it down just for Discord. After testing this emoji in Discord, I ended up not liking it at all. It's always a good idea to test your emoji and see if it's actually looking right because it always looks different in the platform you're using it than it does at the large scale you drew it at. So I didn't like it at all and I had to really think about what was wrong with it and I decided to redraw it. So I am redrawing that entire emoji trying to get it to the proper pose to where it will look good in Discord. Which is annoying, but in the end, I'd rather have an emoji I'm satisfied with than one that I know could be better. So here's a quick comparison of the old and the new versions, because I work very non-destructively and I kept both. But it is nice to compare and see the differences. You can see the new one is much more expressive and the hands are in a much better position where they're not interfering too much with the facial shape which I felt like before they were kind of too much on the sides of the face and they were kind of too much in line with it. But this new drawing works so much better for this expression. I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope you learned a thing or two of how you could make your own emojis or any drawing really. I am teaching myself how to do emojis, so the more I do it, the more I kind of understand what to look out for and what works and what doesn't work. So it really it just takes a lot of practice to know. Also, seeing what other people do help. I do that too, where I like to copy what other people do, or that's pretty much how I started the style actually, is I just liked the style because it was nice and simple. Although there are many styles you can make emojis in, this is just the style I chose. But I hope you enjoyed this video. I might make another one with emojis because there's more I want to make, so I might as well make a video out of it. After all, that's why I made this channel to begin with, for anything art. And with that, I hope to see you again sometime. See you.